These little guys help us survive. Can you want to learn how to throat sing? Sure. Okay. It's like, I'm a, I'm a, a musician. Yeah. Um, that's my, and I'm interested in like history of, of music and how techniques have passed on from generation on to generation and from people to people. And Ever since I was young, I started throat singing when I was like a little girl. Um, I was amused, not amused, I don't know what the proper term in English, I was... Give me a strong word in English. Seduced. Punched. Punched. <laughs> Hit. It's, it was like okay. a big spark for me because it was unique, it was different. Essential sounding, like very nature-based, very in that crude way, like... It's just... It's unreal. It's a bit surreal. It, it doesn't look real. And, but what it's do you mean coming. By that? I don't even know. Mm -hmm. Maybe it was a spiritual thing. Who knows? I don't even know myself. Okay. God, there's too many things I don't know about. Maybe I should go back to my community and do some research myself. <laughs> The <laughs> And you relate to the nature, you sing about the nature, you sing with the nature, and it's just powerful. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> 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 
Different places all over the world that have things like throat singing, like uh, Mongolian throat singing, and with your Inuit throat singing, um, I find that really interesting, even though they're so far apart as f geographically. Do you know where it <laughs> comes from? Uh, when I ask my grandparents, or <clears throat> they just say, it's our tradition, because, you know, the Inuit people have a long history. In Nunavik only, they've had a history, they've been living there for 500 years, but the migration routes and everything, I don't know where, you know, exactly who got to where and who got here and Dalai Lama looks Inuk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah he yeah. looks like my grandfather. Wow. No. <laughs> yeah, that happens a lot. Uh, everybody assumes that I'm, I'm Inuit, that I'm from the north and when I see people on the street and some uh, other people from, uh, from the north, we walk towards each other and they say to me, enough to talk? And I said, no, sorry, Chinese. <laughs> Demon <laughs> The meaning of Eskimo? Raw meat eaters. Raw savage meat eaters. That's how native Indians identify Inuit people as. Eskimo is an Indian word meaning raw meat eaters. But we, Inuit people, have a name to identify the uh, native Indians, and that's iqilit, meaning people with lice. My grandfather told me that uh, throat singing was a form of art and before Christianity was introduced, the shamanism was the religion for the Inuit all over the Arctic. A shaman would go into a trance, sort of like uh, chanting. It's a different form of chanting. It's not coming from within, but it's singing ayaya songs. And there are different various types of ayaya songs used for different various reasons. The shaman would travel out of his body and through, the, through his spirit, travel to um, different parts of the land. And shamans also gave strength to hunters. Shamans also gave strength to women. Gave strength to women to be able to sew clothing well so that their families are well dressed for the winter. Shamans traveled in all forms.
when Christianity arrived, the Inuit people were told that shamanism was taboo. So it's been almost, it has almost become extinct because of outside influence and how we have been taught that our own beliefs, our own religion is taboo and it's evil. She doesn't know. As you can tell from the way I look, everybody thinks I'm an Inuit. It was funny to see. <laughs> Maybe it was. I don't even know. Mm -hmm. No, it's in Nunavut. The Bering Strait story mm. over Mongolia. She doesn't know. But she knows, she understands that Japanese and Du was are alike. Maybe came from the Mongolians? Mm. Yeah, she thinks so, because they are more like Inuit when you look at them. And um, the two winds as well. Mm-hmm. Well, I know for a fact through uh, physicians and doctors and Inuit people know this as well. Um, Northern Chinese, Mongolians and Inuit people are the only groups of people in all of the world who are born with a blue mark on their bum. I was born with that. Any person who has the genes coming from those parts of the world are born with a blue bum. And the blue marks are there for a couple of months. We have two very special people here. They went through a similar experience as I have gone through. Uh, sort of losing your identity at one point, right? Sort of getting lost and not knowing who you are and trying to find your way. And I was born in Fort Smith, Northwest Territories. I was adopted straight to Montreal. So did you grow up with uh, any people in Montreal? No, I was, I, my father's Jewish and my mother's from the Philippines. I never met a native person until I was 18 years old. For me, it's, it's like an obsession to look at people's and their family and look at resemblances because I never had that. I never had people say, oh, you look exactly like your mom. And You look like your mother. Yeah. Ironically, I look exactly like my biological mother. And, and so it's, my childhood was, was pretty, you know, pretty, it could be stressful when, you know, a couple of times. And there was, like, I, I suffered abuse in my family too. And, whether that happened because I was adopted or whether that happened for whatever reason, um, it's, it's in the past right now. I'm trying to get all the positive you know, information and love and caring from the communities that really matter to me, which are the Native and the Inuit communities. It's almost like putting my foot in the door and kind of opening it up. <laughs> it's very important because it, it gives me a sense of belonging. Hold on. <laughs> it gives me a sense of belonging, um, which I never had growing up, and to be surrounded like in the past couple past couple of days I've been here, and all I've been feeling is belonging to. This is what I've been looking for, for. Uh, most of my life, actually. <laughs> if we look at the history of when missionaries came up to now, 
um, we don't see people in their 40s and or 50s and late 30s throat singing. It's uh, older ladies from 60 years of age and on and then there's a big generation gap from about 25-ish to a very young age when missionaries came, the government came, Inuit people were no longer nomads. We became a settlement, we became a community. Now we are recognizing that we have almost lost our traditions, our customs as Inuit people. We are going to our elders and we are asking, we are seeking, we're asking for their help, we're asking for their assistance. Please help us bring back our culture. <laughs> That's the, to practice your throat, because sometimes when you're just learning, it's usually from the front that you sing it when you're a beginner. But that one is in the throat. It has to start from the inside. Oh. Um, she just wanted to mention that throat singing is very important to elders. She wants us, the young people, to really understand where it's coming from. If they're going to learn to use the throat singing, not to uh, use it, but to keep it to Inuit. And I wanted to capture that. I wanted to feel it. I want it to be like an Inuk, like the women. Inuit women up north are very strong. So I want it to be like them, to be pure Inuk. This is called boiling. Boiling. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 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 Ha <laughs> 
If you want to go to the opera, you expect to hear a very beautiful voice and very strong, and, and it touches you. But throat singing is not like that, but it does touch you. Just gives you a feeling, a really strong vibration type. It doesn't sound like angels singing. It sounds more like Mother Nature singing. And Mother Nature is beautiful, but it's got a lot of strengths like the wind. It was something that was, that gave me shivers. And the first time I heard it was, I was amazed that, you know, women could make those sounds. When I wanted to learn throat singing, I just wanted it to be part of me again, because I had lost that. Very sensual, very seductive. And really, there's nothing else I think about except my breathing and the sound I'm making and the movement of my partner's mouth. I'm 
To say that my infinity with the North is due to the way I look is putting it lightly. The truth is, every time I hear Inuit throat singing, I hear voices from Tibet, Middle East, Austria, Africa. I hear the call that resonates in me like a primal force. What does it mean? Why do I have such an infinity? I don't know. I need to find out. It's this primal force that's urging me on a journey of discovery. I don't know where, you know, exactly who got to where and who got here and maybe came from the Mongolians. And if it did, how come the Inuit women are the singers, the traditional singers? I don't know. Even you can't answer it. I cannot answer it. Yeah. You know, this is what I'm proposing to you, to ask you if you're interested in, you know, we both go and do this little journey mm -hmm. together. Two long lost sisters going on a hunt for answers. They'll be speaking to us in Tuvan, and I'll say, I'm Inuk. I'm Chinese. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Something like those ducks over there. Hey, <laughs> 